these endurance races, as we know, no news is good news. And that's the case for your GTD, current class leader of the number 57 Windward Mercedes. All through the afternoon yesterday in the hot, sticky temperatures, they were consistent. They were in the hunt. And then the sunset. And of course, we saw that Mercedes come to life, continually staying in the hunt and managing that lead. And the team right now very confident in the driver lineup they've had. They've seen success with this driver lineup. And they said overall they feel like this Mercedes is the most balanced manufacturer right now in that GTD class in both the hot conditions and the cool conditions. So while the teams and the drivers, they're enjoying this cool temperature down on pit road, they've got the confidence that when the sun comes up and the track gets hot again, they could still be in contention for that Rolex watch a little bit later on. Hannah Gar Robinson just jumped out of the 74. That he did, and we've talked about this team all weekend long, making that move up to LMP2 and having to somewhat re-rack your expectations as you develop this team. You've been consistently in the top five all weekend long. I mean, how encouraging is that to see? Well, Tristan Hart and I talked earlier today, and you said the goal on the table wasn't even a moto win, but just to simply ride to 100% of your capability. Do you feel like in that moto you tapped it? You've continually talked about the 57 Windward Mercedes car and just a great performance they've had so far into the running of the Rolex 24. But no matter the outcome, that team has themselves a pretty good prize waiting for them at the tail end of this 24 hours, and that prize being a brand new 40,000 square foot facility. It's been in the works for about a year or so. Of course, Mercedes really jumping on board with them. They're currently in a about 15,000 square foot facility. This new one, more than double it, and talking to Russell Ward about this new facility. You know, they have that Michelin Pilot uh, challenge car, plus they've got their WeatherTech endurance stuff. Uh, and he said, I still feel like I went too small. I should have built a bigger shop. And guys, I don't know if that's the most guy that owns a race car <laughs> statement I've ever heard. I still just should have built a bigger shop. Let's go to Hannah Newhouse for more. Yeah, thanks, Brian Till. We talk about the intensity every time these drivers are on the racetrack. Well, it was especially intense for the four Team Vassar Sullivan Lexus. Friday afternoon, well, that team had a little bit of an off road excursion with Ben Barnico. Fortunately for the team, though, able to repair that original car, a little late, but able to make it out for the qualifying efforts Friday afternoon. Usually, the co driver for Barnacote is Jack Hawksworth. He's currently still recovering from some injuries, so the team has recruited powerhouse of Kamui Kobayashi for the co driver this weekend here in the return to CTMP. So, a lot of pressure on that team, but hey, Dave, Calvin, we know they've got capable drivers behind the wheel. Let's check in with Hannah on pit lane. Yeah, Charlie and Kevin, these teams definitely expected this chaos. When I checked in with them prior to going green in this race, I said, how do you prepare for a latter half of a race where initially it was hot, they was slick, and now we are on wet conditions? And they said, you don't. You take a guess at it. So they were changing wing angles. They were changing springs. And of course, they've got those wet tires on as well. And a lot of these guys said it's going to take a couple laps to get everything underneath them and really understand what the track conditions hold for them. This racetrack is one of the most technical ones they've seen thus far on the tour and the thing that's hanging them all up is the matrix right here this is the first time that we've seen a matrix actually have a downhill slant so therefore the guys they can't just roll off the matrix if they have an issue unfortunately they're going up and over the handlebars let's go back down to pit lane hannah i understand you may have a question or two for the boys here well, one of the things, Brian, down here, you know, as we scan radios, uh, the drivers, of course, having to take their own breaks over the 24-hour period, but so do the spotters. So with that extra time length, of course, additional spotters have been brought in to help call this race, and NASCAR spotters are some of the guys that have brought, been brought in for the reinforcements, especially here over this night shift. And something that has been interesting and I wanted to talk to you guys about is the difference between your IMSA regular spotters as you listen to them on the radio. To be quite frank, they don't really say a lot. These tell these guys the bare minimum, what they need to know and when they need to know it. And then you can tell when a NASCAR spotter gets on the radio and talks to these guys. They are clearing them, giving them car counts to and from, the cars in front of them, behind them, an almost overload of information. And you have to wonder, you know, you know, Brian coming from sports cars, but even Steve, for these guys that are not used to that much talking in their ear, is that off-putting? And then for maybe the guys that come from IndyCar and NASCAR and are racing with them, is it off-putting to not have that consistent voice in your ear? Well, Hannah, I think that's a great point. Let's head back down to pit road. Hannah, you've caught up with that young Connor Zilich, I believe. That I have doing a little recovery here, making sure he's still hydrated. A stellar move out there to maintain that class lead before handing it over to Ryan Dial. But again, your first time in multi-class racing, you had a GTD, a GTP, and then trying to maintain class lead. What was going through your head in that moment? 
and we look forward to watching him race both those races. But if you weren't able to join us, it was three playoff races that led us to tonight for the season finale. We narrowed the field down to four championship contenders. So let's take a look at how we got here. That it is, it's been development with this car for not only the past couple weeks, but the past couple months for you guys to be out here at the Rolex lead laps and currently be leading in class uh, overall here. How satisfactory is that for you, not only as a driver, but this team? In GTD, Robbie Foley leads in the BMW, Hannah. Well, we were just talking about Massa being one of the veterans in the sport, but now, of course, Jake Walker joining me, one of the drivers here of this Turner Motorsports lineup. Your first IMSA start, your first time racing in multi-class racing, and 17 years old, have you been able to get out of the car and debrief a little bit? How was it out there? It, it... Hannah. With the two hour and 30 mark now hitting the clock here, the 57 Windward team is now in sprint racing mode with Philip Ellis behind the wheel. The double stinted tires, they're now behind them. They've managed all of that through the evening. So from here on out, every time that Mercedes comes down onto pit road, a new set of Michelin stickers will go on that Mercedes. And for the team though, they still want to put every advantage that they can in their back pocket. So Philip Ellis being told over the radio, while yes, you can push if necessary, still be in a little bit of fuel conservation mode and still be consistent with those lap times. We don't want to take any unnecessary risks if we don't have to, Parker. 